In this Dragonfly 4 training video, we're going to look at a new tool in Dragonfly which allows you to perform 3D stitching of multiple 3D data sets. What I'm doing now is I'm loading the first 3D volume. This is a data set collected by Synchrotron Microtomography at the ALS Synchrotron at Berkeley. The data were shared by Ali Badran from the University of Colorado. The data were collected as a uh, 3D mosaic or 3D array of multiple tiles and the first tile is indexed 0, 0. The second tile we'll load in is tile 0, 1. So we'll pull the second data set in and we'll call this one 0, 1 and we'll tell it to finish. Now the data sets should be offset if you have the proper origin. However, these data sets don't have an origin so we'll have to manually move them to be in the right position. Now, uh, if I turn it on, you'll see that there one is right on top of the other. Now, this first data set should be in the zero, zero position, and the zero, one should be offset in the plus direction on, in this convention, it was called the y-axis. In Dragonfly, it's actually going to be the, the z-axis. If I go into the probe tool, I can see when I click in the position here that this has position, you know, 5 microns in this z-axis, and I scroll down, this has position 230 microns. So if I know this is supposed to be farther in that axis, I can just drag it in that direction. So I'm going to select this image, and I'm going to select move, and now I'm just going to drag it down. So if we, they were supposed to be butted up against each other, they would be right here. Now in this case, the user tells me that he expects this image to be offset by about 50 slices. So it should have an overlap somewhere of about 50 slices. So we'll just leave it right there for now. In order to make the visualization help us align, at least do the course alignment, I'm going to change the color of the images. I'm going to take the first image and I'm going to make it cyan. I'm going to take the second image and I'm going to make it appear yellow. I'm also going to put in some transparency. And now when I'm trying to position these, if I'm looking at the different uh, cross sections, it might be easier to position. So we can position these in the X and Y uh, or, or Z. We can also come into this plane. If I move my crosshairs down so that uh, there's overlap, then it might be easier to position these to get it about right. And now I'll come over here and I'll get it looks about right there and we can see here we have not bad alignment and we'll do one final round in here it doesn't have to be too precise because right now we're just doing a manual course alignment we'll ask the software to do a fine alignment now the next step is to perform that fine alignment and rather than asking the software to optimize the fit between one and two and evaluate the entire image we can tell it to evaluate just this area here. I'm going to restrict that area just by using a visual shape like a box. So I'll create a box and I'll position it right here and what we're effectively doing is telling Dragonfly when you're evaluating this alignment for fine registration using the automatic registration methods just evaluate in this area of our world coordinates. Now I'll click on the 00, zero image and I'll ask for data set registration We'll, we will leave the 0, 0 tile fixed and we'll allow the 0, 1 data set to be mobile. We will tell it to use a mask and we'll use box 4 as the mask and we'll tell it to provide uh, translation only. There should be no scale difference and there should be no rotation based on how this experiment was collected. We can choose which registration function to use and which interpolation method on the evaluation and we'll just use the sum of squared differences. I'll click apply and it will move tile 1 with respect to tile 0 and try and get that fine optimization. So depending on how big your channels are and how big your mask is, this can take a few minutes on larger images. Alright, it's complete and if we zoom in we can see it's, it's very precise. It was pretty precise before we even started. So we have good registration. I'll close this. Now, well, we can hide the box. What we'd like to do now is perform the stitching on the data. I'll right click on one of the channels and I'll ask for the Merge Data Sets tool. This allows us to choose which data sets we're going to merge. I'll drag in the, channel, the tile one. And now that I have two tiles in here, I'm going to tell it to reset the box. Now this is giving us the box over which the merging will happen. 
So you could say I only want to merge a sub a set of the total volume or you could actually make the final channel larger if you needed to for some reason. If you do leave it open where there are gaps along the sides then Dragonfly has to have uh, some instruction as to what value to put in here. So when you see this dialog and you see a blank for out of bounds value it tells Dragonfly what to put in the empty space. When you have only one image channel, Dragonfly knows what to put there, so it knows what values to put here and what values to put here. When there's overlap, Dragonfly then invokes the blending function. So you can choose the mean of the overlapping channels, the maximum or the minimum. You can also choose no blending, in which case it will just take the value from one of the overlapping channels, and it takes it from whichever one is listed first in this list. The final function is weighted which allows you to perform uh, weighting so the image pixels will be weighted based on how close they are to the origin of the contributing image. When the interpolation is done you can tell it to do, do nearest interpolation in which case it will not do any resampling or you can choose a more precise interpolation like tricubic. The resolution of the corresponding data is that if you choose most precise, it will use the smallest pixel size from all listed channels. You could also uh, specify a voxel size if you like, or you could specify matrix dimensions. So it's taking this entire red box and then it's saying, okay, I'll make that 1100 pixels long in X and 10,072 pixels in, in Y and then 678 in Z. So you have as much control over here as you could possibly ask for. Uh, for this example, we want it to go very quickly, so let's just choose a, a small subvolume in order to perform the stitching. So we'll restrict it a little bit in uh, X and in Y and make it a little bit shorter in Z. You could also do that in the 3D window if you wanted to. So uh, if we turn down the transparency of this, then you'll, you'll see that red box. So with everything uh, in place, we'll go ahead and click Merge, and now it's creating a new image channel the size of the red box and it's populating it with the merged data. So if we turn off the uh, source channels and turn on the merged data uh, then we see the result of the merge. And so it looks pretty good. Um, this is actually a fracture in the sample that has nothing to do with the merge data. If you want to look and see where the contributing data were you can see that's where data tile 0 ended and here's where tile 1 ended. Uh, so it's very difficult to see a seam because we did use the blending function. And so that's everything you need to know about stitching together 3D channels in Dragonfly using the Merge Datasets feature.